While flying over the coastline on a beautiful sunny day, a person records a mysterious structure that might actually change everything we thought we knew about this world. And it might actually unravel ancient ruins and pyramids that were found underneath the surface of the ocean that are possibly older than any other civilization that ever existed. Not only that, there's possibly a huge cover-up to hide the existence of these ancient ruins. From mysterious places that defy common sense, to unexplained alien-like structures and underwater ancient ruins, in this video we'll be taking a look at the most mysterious places that should not exist. Are you guys ready? Well, let's go. Now when it comes to mysterious places on this planet, the ocean is full of them. The only problem is that usually recording these locations is often nearly impossible due to the harsh, unforgiving conditions. Now given that we've only explored about 20% of the ocean, there's so much about it that we don't know. Stories of underwater civilizations such as Atlantis, or alien-like creatures that inhabit our lakes and oceans spark endless speculations about what really hides deep within our planet. Okay. What is that, bud? Um, what the heck? What is that, bud? I have no clue. Wow, they're videotaping it as, as well, hey? Yeah. yeah, look at that. What the heck? <laughs> what is this? On October 8th, an internet account by the name of Pasalo65 was flying over the Gulf of Mexico, when all of a sudden he spots this massive structure under the surface of the ocean. He does what most people would do, he gets his camera and begins recording this mysterious structure and this is what he saw. While flying over the Gulf of Mexico, Pasalo 65 spots what appears to be a pyramid-shaped structure just off the coast of Yucatan. After posting the video to TikTok, it amasses millions of views and thousands of comments, and some people think that this is just an optical illusion. However, if we decrease the saturation and increase the contrast of the video, we can clearly see that it's not just one pyramid that we're looking at. It seems as if there are more pyramid-shaped structures and most internet users seem to agree. Now whatever's going on here, this does not look like a coincidence or an optical illusion. So I started researching the topic and I came across several articles that state that in 2001, a team of explorers that were working off the coast of Cuba came across sunken pyramids that they supposedly found using sophisticated sonar equipment. Strange, isn't it? But well, here are things take an even stranger turn. Paulina Zelinsky and her husband, which were part of this team of explorers, stated that these pyramids were about 6,000 years old, which would be older than the Egyptian pyramids. And if this is the case, it would possibly change everything we thought we knew about the past. Not only that, they also hypothesize that there was a land bridge between Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, which makes us wonder if there's a huge complex of underwater ruins that remain untouched in the Gulf of Mexico. Now, if all of this weren't strange enough, it gets even stranger. These team of explorers were featured in many different websites on December 2001, and after that, it goes silent. There is absolutely no information, no follow-up, nothing. It's as if this team of explorers never existed, in other words, it could be fake, or it was covered up for some mysterious reason. Now this wouldn't be the first time a pyramid is discovered under the ocean. In 1987, divers discovered a mysterious rock formation off the coast of Yonaguni in Japan. With its stabbed terraces, sharp angles and flat surfaces, 
The strange structure led many to believe it could be the remains of an ancient man-made city, possibly 5,000 years old. However, to this day, the true origin of the Yunaguni monument remains a mystery. Some think it's a natural geological formation, while others debate that it could be the remains of a lost civilization. But it doesn't stop there. In 2007, researchers discovered a mysterious stone formation at the bottom of Lake Michigan, now referred to as the Lake Michigan Stonehenge. With its large arranged stone resembling the famous Stonehenge in England, this underwater structure led many to speculate about its origin. Among the stones is one with an ancient carving of a mastodon, suggesting that it could date back over 10,000 years. To this day, the true purpose of the Lake Michigan Stonehenge remains unclear, sparking debates about whether it's a natural formation or evidence of an ancient, forgotten civilization. It seems the deeper we go into this mystery, the more we get closer to the idea of an ancient lost civilization, one that could resemble the stories of Atlantis. Now, according to Plato, Atlantis was highly advanced and may have existed about 10 to 11,000 years ago, and at some point in time was swallowed into the sea following a battle that led to its disappearance. Now, what boggles several researchers and experts is that the ocean is so vast that an entire civilization could still be hiding within its waters. In 1991, a mysterious sound coined the Upsweep was recorded by researchers, and to this day, no one has an idea of what it could be. The sound was recorded somewhere in the Pacific Ocean and to this day, no one has any idea of its origin. This for instance is the same sound sped up 16 times, check this out. There was also one recorded in 1997 coined the Bloop. Now these unexplained sounds and mysterious ocean phenomena spark several speculations that range from an advanced civilization inhabiting the sea to unknown creatures lurking in the depths or even secret underwater bases. But I want to know your take, do you think that Pasalo 65's video and the mysterious discovery of these underwater pyramids in Cuba could help prove the existence of an ancient civilization that once existed in the Gulf of Mexico? And could this somehow be connected to the myth of Atlantis? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Now when it comes to mysterious places, there's quite a few that remain completely unexplained to this day. And this would be the case with this mysterious door that was recently found hanging from a mountain in the outskirts of Jinan in China. In the video we can see a massive door that appears to have been built on top of a mountain for unknown purposes. The construction itself seems quite impossible and for obvious reasons, these videos spark the curiosity of the entire internet. Questions like who built it, what was it used for and what's inside are some that come to mind. Speculations ranged from an abandoned bunker to a secret base, but the true origin of this door remains a mystery. To this moment, no one has ever flown a drone inside mostly because it will lose signal. And no one ever climbed it because it's way too high and dangerous. 
but if there's any update on this mystery, I'll be sure to let you guys know. In 1974, a group of miners in Donetsk stumbled upon a peculiar artifact buried deep underground. A wheel-like structure estimated to be around 300 million years old. This strange find, embedded in a layer of coal, perplexed researchers as it suggests, an advanced design, highly unusual for a time when no human civilization or even basic terrestrial life should have existed. The miners initially tried to remove the wheel using pick hammers, but the sandstone it was imprinted on was incredibly hard. Fearing that they would damage the print, they decided to leave it in place and instead photographed it. The donut squeal has become one of the most mysterious discoveries, leaving experts divided. Was it a natural formation mimicking human design, or does it hint at an unknown ancient technology from a lost age? In 2011, locals in the North Caucasus Mountains in Kabardino Balkaria stumbled upon the entrance to a hidden cave within the Karakora mountain range. This underground shaft leads to a cave system that features walls that are unnaturally smooth and precise, as if crafted by someone or something. Speleologists, including Arthur Zimukov, were amongst the first to explore the cave. Arthur and his team uncover a 40-meter descent into a vast hall with perfectly aligned megalithic walls, reaching a total depth of 100 meters. This, for instance, is a sketch of how the cave looks. Doesn't look like a cave at all, does it? Now get this, within the hall, tunnels of various sizes branch off, and a peculiar floating megalith appears almost suspended in air. Not only that, Arthur and the other explorers noted a strange airflow from the bottom of the cave, as if it functioned as some sort of ventilation shaft. Now here's where things take a very strange turn. The next day after discovering the cave, Arthur Zimukov tragically died in a car accident. Year after year, the entire team that had discovered this cave began dying from mysterious illnesses, leading several people to speculate there was something very eerie about this discovery. Now to make things even more mysterious, there are several legends that locals tell of an underground city that exists in this region. Some believe it's possibly the entrance to Shambhala, while others speculate that this is some sort of advanced construction that leads to an even deeper level. Now in 2018, Alexander Splashnov also finds this hidden entrance in the Karakora mountain range and posts several pictures to his social media. In these pictures we can get a better idea of the depth of this cave and how smooth and perfectly aligned the megalithic walls are, giving us the impression that this is not naturally made. But the question is, if so, who made it, how deep does it go, and what was it made for? Just a couple of weeks ago, a video went viral all over the internet of what appears to be a group of archaeologists uncovering a mysterious structure somewhere in China. It appears as if they were building a road and came across this mysterious structure. Now there's one tiny detail about this video that caught a lot of attention and that would be the fact that whatever this structure is, it looks as if the doors and windows are too small for human beings. And because of that, loads of people started suggesting that this is possibly a structure built for duendes, fairies or gnomes. Vea muchachos, vea, los que no creen en los duendes, vea. Vean un duende, vea.
Que te ayude. Uh. Now unfortunately there's not much information about this video. Some people believe it to be the roof of a structure, while others think that this is something else entirely, and that there's another side of the story to our ancient past that's been totally covered up. As you may already know, our past is filled with stories and myths of giants, gnomes, fairies and tiny humanoid creatures that may have inhabited Earth at some point in the past. The little people that live under the earth and take care of the earth make sure that the rivers flow and the grass to grow and the trees. They say if you ever find a spring, you know, just get your water and go. You're not supposed to hang around there. It's not for you to hang around. So you just go because those little people, they protect those spots. They're not for people to overuse. So they come back around if you stay there too long. Pretty amazing because some of the tribes have similar stories and similar beliefs and, and that's what I've heard, that's what I've seen and experienced myself. So. Now even though certain cultures and tribes take these stories very seriously, in our modern world, these stories are just myths. But if you start researching about the topic of giants or small humanoid beings, we'll come across several ancient structures that may actually prove that something else happened in the past. And I guess that one of the most mysterious places when it comes to these ancient constructions is Peru. Esta arquitectura no se ve en ninguna parte de Perú y según científicos del mundo. Located in the district of Huanuco in Peru lies the archaeological site of Aquimarca, an ancient ruin that stands out for its peculiar miniature structures unlike any other found in the entire country. Believed to have been built by the Chupaychu civilization during the pre-Inca era, these small stone constructions have sparked legends of duendes, or in other words, very small humanoid beings that may have inhabited the region. Now even though in today's world the legend of duendes is often dismissed as a myth, there are certain things about this ancient structure that makes us wonder whether there might be more to our distant past than we've been led to believe. No contexto arqueológico conocido o similar como este. Mira okay. la calle en la otra. Sí. De tal, mira. De dos aguas. Dos aguas. Esto se no dice, hay. Se dice que se ha creado en Europa. Tres mil años antes, cualquier civilización. Y también los alares. O sea, esto. Las protecciones. Los voladitos. Los, los voladizos. Claro, ahí está, mira. ¿No? Ahí está, mira. Y las rocas son perfectas, son hermosas. No, mire, son... Miren, si tú mides, lajas, mejor esto, que lajas. Con esto, yeah. tal cual. Todo es exacto. Todo es preciso, claro. The more we look into this ancient structure built somewhere around five to ten thousand years ago, the more it becomes clear that whomever or whatever built this, it made sure that all the windows, doors, and passageways were perfectly aligned and measured the same distance. Interesante que la, viendo mis videos, como estuve aquí no me percaté, pero como aquí miré, me percaté de este lugar. Mira, esto no es que se sale una piedra, esta agujera atrás. Se atrás, conecta atrás, también. Pero no por acá, o sea, por acá. Por la parte alta. Ductos pequeños dentro de, de las fachadas. Ductos pequeños dentro de las fachadas. Aparte de los ductos grandes. O sea, este lugar, y de la T, también te quiero mencionar algo. Sí. Vamos a la T. Hay varias, por acá. Que sea esta T, ¿no? Por decir. Yeah. De esta T. Now what makes all of this very strange is that there are tiny air ducts that were perfectly built into the structure and they run from one side to the other making this a very detailed miniature structure. If we take into consideration that this was built 5 to 10 thousand years ago, it actually makes us wonder, who built this and what for? To make things even stranger, in another video YouTuber Trajelo Explorador checks the structure for electromagnetic anomalies and this is what he finds. Strange, isn't it? But the deeper we go into this topic, the stranger it becomes. 
Stories of duendes and smaller humanoid beings can be found all over the world. And alongside with these stories, we'll usually find structures that suggest that something happened in the distant past, something that we have little to no knowledge about. Mire, no entiendo cómo es posible que esta roca está sosteniéndose. This, for instance, is another very different miniature city found somewhere in Peru. Located in eastern Mesopotamia is the village of Makunik, a place where houses are built to be one meter in height and where archaeologists once uncovered 25 centimeter mummies, sparking the theory that this ancient city was once inhabited by dwarfs. These and many more ancient ruins makes us wonder what really happened in the past. But I want to know your take. Do you think that duendes or smaller humanoid beings may have inhabited Earth at some point in time? Hey, it's on the seat, Brian. Yes, it is. No, no. Come back. And what do you think these ancient structures were used for? Do you think that they may actually help prove the existence of such beings? Or do you think that there's something else going on here? What's your take? The Mojave Desert, with its vast arid landscape and endless horizons, has long captivated the imaginations of explorers and wanderers alike. Known for its extreme temperatures and remote, almost alien-like terrain, the Mojave is more than just a barren wasteland. It's a place of eerie beauty and hidden secrets. From tales of lost civilizations and unexplained disappearances to sightings of strange lights, this desert holds a reputation as one of the most mysterious places in North America. Caves like that. Now, just so you have an idea, on November 2014, a YouTuber known as Kenny Veach set off on one of his last hikes to find what he believed to be a supernatural cave located in the Mojave Desert. Uh, I'm looking for a cave that I, I found, and, and something about that cave just spooked me out of all the caves I've ever gone in. This one just made my body vibrate, shaped like a big M. It's a big cave that looks just like a gigantic M. Now, there's a really good chance that you may already know about Kenny Veach and the infamous M Cave. And this is not the story I'm going to be featuring right now, but I think it's a very important piece of information when it comes to unexplained disappearances and unsolved mysteries in the Mojave Desert. Now, Kenny Veach was an adventurer and experienced hiker, and for unknown reasons, he disappeared on November 10th, 2014, after uploading a video to YouTube stating that he had found this mysterious cave in the Mojave Desert. My eyes peeled because I don't want to pass it. Yeah. And then there's caves like that, you know. The cave was said to emit a strange, pulsating vibration that caused intense fear and disorientation to anyone who approached it. To this day, neither Kenny Veach nor the infamous M Cave have ever been found, leaving the mystery unsolved. Now, just recently, a YouTuber by the name of Aqua Chigger ventured into the Mojave Desert to have an experience of his own. And it was on a sunny day that he almost found himself in a very difficult situation. This is what happened. a really good reason not to drive around late at night out here. <laughs> to drive down this little road. Looky where it ends. <laughs> Can you imagine? I wonder if there's any cars down there, man. I'm going to have to get a rock to throw down there for you. Are you ready? Listen. Yeah, I don't know if you could hear that very well, but the first one I threw in there went clatter, 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 splash. So even though we're way up here in the uh, desert, very dry, at least, I don't know, I'd say, God, we gotta be 
500 feet above the desert floor at least. There's water down less than 100 feet. Now, look, there's another mine over there. We're going to check that out. That's a big trash pile. We're going to go check it out. While too. driving on the desert, Aqua Chigar stops his car just a few meters away from one of the many abandoned mines in the Mojave Desert. It is said that hundreds of hikers that have gone missing in this region may have actually fallen into one of these mines. And if Aqua Chigar hadn't been paying attention, he would be in deep trouble. Don't worry, I'm not going in it by myself. Look at that incline, that is awesome. That's a rock down there. Whether or not we could actually get in it. Man, I'd love to go down in there though. Ready? Yeah, it went down a ways, probably 7,500 feet. Run over here a little bit, see what we got. These are all pads where they had buildings and stuff to get the ore up out of there. Not sure what that is. Gold, gold something. I don't see a date though, unfortunately. Most of these mines were built during the California gold rush in the late 1800s or early 1900s. At the time, prospectors were looking for gold, silver, and other valuable minerals. However, many of these mines were quickly abandoned when resources were depleted or when mining operations became too costly or unprofitable. I was doing a little research and I came across this air base. You see it goes down through there, down to there, and on the ends of these there's something weird, I can't tell what it is. I'm just looking at it from Google Earth and this is the airstrip. There's something really weird looking way out there. While looking through Google Earth, Aqua Chigar finds what's supposed to be an abandoned airstrip from the 1950s. And in the end of it, there's something really odd, something that he can't quite explain by looking at Google Earth. So he drives a few miles to find out, and this is what he saw. Oh, okay, so this is concrete. I think the rest of the runway was steel mats. Oh yeah, that's right, they had like spokes going off of these things, the end of it here. It's really kind of strange looking. That's what we're looking at is the spokes. I'm going to get out for a minute and just kind of look around a little bit, and then we're going to take a road, hopefully up that direction. hood <laughs> something weird off to our side we go look at aqua chigger gets out of his car to look at this bizarre structure that he had found through google earth they built it for water i guess <laughs> he walks towards this mysterious structure that was built in the middle of the mojave desert it actually looks as if some sort of water tank or something like that isn't that bizarre whatever this thing is it's one of the many mysterious structures found on google earth at the Mojave Desert, and if we take a look around, we'll find many others. The thing is, there's something really strange about this place, and it seems that most hikers and explorers seem to agree. It's not just a vast, desolate landscape. There's something eerie about the disappearances and sightings in this region that makes it one of the most mysterious places in the United States. In your opinion, what could have happened to the experienced hiker Kenny Veach? Could it be that he accidentally fell into one of these mines while searching for the M cave, or did something else happen to him? And what mysteries do you think lie beneath some of these mysterious structures found in the Mojave Desert? This is it for now, but we do have more videos. Don't forget to check them out, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel with notifications on for more videos like this. And I'll see you guys again.